Sometimes when we're trying to figure out probabilities, we kind of have a statistic already in mind when we get started. Let's suppose that 30% of people in a town shop at Safely. So this information could have been uh, gotten from a series of surveys, uh, all sorts of stuff. We'll learn more about collecting statistics like this in our next unit, actually. But if we think about this as 30% of people in a town shopping at Safeway, what they're really telling us here is a probability, a probability that one person, if we talk to one person, the chance that they shop at Safeway is 30%. Now let's suppose that instead of talking to one person, we want to talk to two people. What is the chance that both of them, chance or probability, that both of them shop at Safeway? Again, as we talk about our kind of implied order, right? If I talk to the first person, there's a 30% chance that they shop at Safeway. And if I talk to the second person, there's a 30% chance that they shop at Safeway as well. So what we end up having here uh, is just two events that we want to happen at the same time, so we can multiply those together. Keep in mind, anytime that we do any dealing with percentages, when we get to the math part, we need to convert those to decimals. So I have 30% chance for the first person, 30% chance for the second person, and if I multiply those together, I end up with 0 0.09, or a 9% chance that the two people that I talk to both shop at Safeway. Now, this may uh, kind of seem like a little bit of a, um, problem of choosing with replacement, right? We can't, uh, we don't want to talk to the same, or choosing without replacement, we don't want to talk to the same person twice, um, which would talk about maybe affecting that second probability. The problem is, or the case is, when we have so many people, like all the people in a town, so let's say, you know, 50,000 people, if we decrease that bottom number by one, it's not really going to make a very big impact on the value, certainly not any sort of a statistical value where we're within a few decimal points. So for problems like this, we can just go ahead and use this value here for each person or thing that we're going to be talking about in our, cal our probability calculations. Um, let's suppose instead, if I talk to peop two people, what is the probability that neither two people what is the probability that neither shops at Safeway? Well, we know that 30% of people shop at Safeway, so everyone else must not shop at Safeway. So if we do 100% minus 30%, that means that the other 70% of people do not shop at Safeway. And so I can use these numbers as my probability calculations in a case like this. So if I'm talking to my first person, I want them to not shop at Safeway. So that's 70% of those. When I talk to my second person, uh, I want them to have not shopped at Safeway either, and there's 70% of those. So I can multiply 0 0.70 times 0.70 and end up with uh, 0.49 or a 49% chance that if I talk to two people in the town, that neither of them are going to be one of the people that shops at Safeway. Now, let's look at another case here. Let's talk to three people.
And in this case, let's find what is the probability that exactly one person of the three shops at Safeway. Well, again, we run into this problem. We've got a first person, a second person, and a third person. And there is some sense of order associated with our probability when we do our calculations. So if I want exactly one of my people to shop at Safeway, I could either have the first person shop at Safeway, but then the other two would not. I could have the second person shop at Safeway, but the other two would not. Or I could have the third person shop at Safeway, but the other two would not. There are three different ways that I can calculate my probabilities in this case. So I'm going to have to figure out each one of these three probabilities individually and then add them together because it could be this or this or this. Let's look at what that would look like. So for my first person or for my first case, if I am looking at Safeway, not Safeway, not Safeway. There's a 30% chance that that first person shops at Safeway, a 70% chance that the second person does not, and a 70% chance that the second person does not. So if I multiply 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 times 0.7, I end up with 0.147 as the probability that the first person I talk to shops at Safeway, but the other two do not. Now, if my second person shops at Safeway, then the first person does not, 0.70, the second person does, 0.30, and the third person does not, 0.70. If I multiply these together, I get 0.147. The other possibility that I could have is that the third person shops at Safeway. So the first person does not, 0.70, the second person does not, 0.70, the third person does, 0.30, and I end up with 0.147. So if I add all of those together, I end up with 0.441, or 44.1% chance that exactly one person is going to shop at Safeway out of all of these. Now, as one final example here, let's switch this situation up one more time. Let's suppose that we're going to talk to three people again. This time, I want to find the probability that at least one person shops at Safeway. Well, at least is a little bit different, and we end up with a lot of ways that this can happen, right? If one person shops at Safeway, we already know there's three ways that that could happen. The first person the second person, or the third person. However, we also have some other ways that this could happen. I could have maybe the first two people shop at Safeway and the third one not, because it's at least one person shops at Safeway, so there's at least one S in the list. Maybe the second two people shop at Safeway. Maybe the first and the third person shop at Safeway. Nope. Did that that way. So 1S, 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 2S's, 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 so any combination of those, or perhaps all three of my people that I talk to shop at Safeway. So there ends up being seven different possibilities, and I can calculate each of these probabilities individually and add those together as a way to do that. However, if you notice, this is lots and lots of different ways that something can happen. And there's something really cool if you see the word at least instead of exactly. If you're trying to find at least one person that's shopping at Safeway, there's only one way that this won't happen. And that is that no one shops at Safeway.
So if I have finding the probability that no one shops at Safeway is pretty easy. Let's go ahead and do that. We have three people. If no one shops at Safeway, it's 0.70 times 0.70 times 0.70, which is 0.343. So what does this mean? There's a 34.3% chance that no one shops at Safeway. that none of the three people that I talked to. So 34.3 chance that no one shops at Safeway means that everyone else in all of the other people, at least one person shops at Safeway. So if I take 100% minus the 34.3%, then I end up with everyone else, which is all of these other possibilities together. If I do 100 percent minus 34.3 percent end up with a 65.7 percent chance that at least one shops at Safeway. So notice this is bigger than our probability that we found for exactly one, and that makes sense, right? Because there's lots of other possibilities. If I want at least one, it could be exactly one or exactly two or all three. So anytime that you see the word at least, it might be easier for you to kind of use the, use the, the backwards way to figure out what the probability is. If at least one of them needs to fulfill something, then we figure out what no one is and subtract that from 100% because that would be everyone else. If you're looking at exactly, you don't have any choice. You've got to look at each of the cases individually when you do that. 